Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with bricks templates, dynamic data, and custom post types so that you can render many different pages only using a single template. Here's an example of how we're utilizing this approach on our agency site. Our web design services break down to two, Shopify development and WordPress development. And between these two pages, there isn't a real reason to have a structure that's different, which essentially just removes the user's focus from the actual content. And the same thing you can see with our SEO services. Depending on what page you click on, the content might change, but the actual structure, the animations, and so forth will remain the same. One of the biggest flaws that I bump into in web development is inconsistency across a build. Sometimes this happens because a developer is excited to implement a specific feature, animation, or typeface, or maybe sometimes the client is pulling in a certain direction. But the bottom line is that a user visits your site and they're not looking to spend over 20 minutes to try to figure out where the data is that they came to check. So by adopting this approach, our users have a much more simplified and intuitive experience while we get to eliminate the need to maintain so many different pages manually. It's truly a win-win for our users and the developers that need to maintain the build. This of course doesn't mean that every single page on our site needs to look and feel exactly the same. If executed correctly, this will reduce a ton of human error while still allowing for some fun and creativity. So if all of this sounds interesting, interesting to you, let's dive right in and take a look at how we can implement this. We're going to use the same sandbox environment from my previous tutorial where I explain how to install Churnstyle by Cloudflare. So let's go to the back end and start building. The first thing we'll do is add a free plugin called Pods to handle our custom post types. Pods is available through the official WordPress marketplace, so we can just search the plugin, install it, and activate it. Next, we'll need to go to all pages. We'll pretend this build is for a home improvement company and create five pages for the services we intend to offer. We'll create flooring, roofing, kitchens, bathrooms, and additions. Now that we have our pages, let's go to templates. We'll need to create a bricks template that essentially acts as the engine for all of our services pages. So we'll call it services and define the template type as single and hit publish. And now that it's published, we can go ahead and hit edit with bricks. I'm going to import a template from our templates library called light.io. So I'll search for a services page and import it so that we can focus on the logic of this tutorial and not how to build this section out manually. Now that we have a section to work with, let's go ahead and hit save. And if you take a look at the front side of this, you'll notice that we still can't see the pages or service template that we made. So let's tackle that next. On the back end, hover over appearance and click on menus. Here, we'll create a simple menu called main and assign it to the services pages that we created, home and contact. Make sure to save everything. And now let's head over to the navigation template where we currently have static links. So I'll click on edit with bricks and let's delete the static link elements that are here from the previous tutorial I made and make sure to click on the container and search for the native bricks navigation element. Once selected, since we only have one menu, it'll auto select the main one we created. So I'll hit save and head over to the front side and refresh and there it is. So now we can go to pods and click on add new. Here we'll create page tags that we'll later use in our bricks template to render our services pages. So let's click on create new, select a custom taxonomy, give it a singular label of page tag and a plural label of page tags and hit next step. And now we just need to do two more things. Let's connect the pod that we just created to our pages under connections and under advanced options, check off the hierarchical box and hit save pod. And now that our WordPress instance has page tags, let's head over to all pages. And if we click on quick edit, we can already see that our pages can now have a tag. So let's edit one of our pages. Under the page column, you'll see that now you can create a new page tag and we'll call this services. Hit update and go back. And now through quick edit, we can assign all of our services pages a services page tag. And the final step to making all of this work is to go to our services template and add a condition that'll make bricks render the correct pages. So go ahead and click on edit with bricks. And in the top left, there's a little settings icon, click on it and in template settings, we'll find the condition settings. And in there, let's add a new condition that'll tell bricks that every time it detects a services tag, it should load this services template. So let's go ahead and hit save, go to the front side and refresh. And now we'll be able to see that the template is loading for all of our services pages. Our next step is to make this a bit more dynamic. That way different content loads within this template. So while we're still in our services template, let's add a dynamic title that'll change according to the page that we're on. 
And to do this, we'll need to add a new section. And let's make sure to push this section above the current section that we've been working in and rename it to be called Hero. Inside this section, let's click into the container itself. That way we can add an element to it. And in the container, add the basic text element. Go ahead and remove the dummy text and click on the little bolt icon so that we can search for the dynamic field called post title. Click on the container again, center the cross axis, and hit save. Now we can head over to the front side again to see this in action. And if we refresh, we'll see that our services template is finally starting to look more dynamic. Now let's take this a step further and change a few more elements in the section we imported from Light.io. Let's change the section's heading and the text that's right under it. So let's save what we have so far and head back to pods. And this time what we wanna do is click on extend existing instead of create new like we did before. And since we're extending our pages, we'll leave the content type as is and select pages for the post type. Click on next step. And this time we're going to create new fields. And these fields are essentially going to be attached to the post type pages that we just defined in the previous step. So let's give this new field a label. We'll call it section one dash title, leave the field type as plain text and hit save new field. And we'll do that one more time. This time we'll call it section one dash body. Hit save new field. And this time we're also ready to hit save pod. And if we navigate back to our pages now, you'll notice that in any of the pages that we go into, there will be two new fields, section one dash title and section one dash body. And we can put into these fields only text because that's what we defined. So let's go back to our template for a minute. And from the front side, I'll grab quickly the title and the body of text. So we can just fill that in here. And what I'm going to do is just make it clear that this is coming from the particular page that we're editing. So in this case, I'll add it to the additions and I'll go back and let's grab the body of text this time and I'll do the same exact step. So I'll paste the body of text into here and again, make it clear that this is coming from this particular page we're on. And now I just need to repeat these steps so that each service page can have different text in the title and body field. So let me do that and fast forward so you don't fall asleep here while I copy and paste a bunch of text. Okay, so now that we got that out the way, let's head over back to our template and we need to let the template know that it needs to render these new fields that we defined from pods. So let's go ahead and click on the competitive advantages heading and remove the text from it. And we can click on the lightning bolt again. And this time we'll select the section one dash title and we'll do the same exact step for the body. So we'll click on the body, remove the dummy text that's there right now and go ahead and select the section one dash body. And this time, if we save our template and go back to our front side and refresh, we should be seeing now that the template is rendering completely different text from the same exact template. So I hope you're getting the hang of this now. Our final step will be to change this image to make it more dynamic. So I'll head over to pods again and add one more field. We'll give this field a label of section one dash featured image and select the field type this time to be file or image instead of plain text like we did before. Hit save new field, save pod, and let's head over back to our template so that we can remove the static image and allow it to render the dynamic image now. So once you're inside the template, these steps should look familiar from before. We'll simply remove the static image, click on the lightning bolt, select the featured image that we just added, which is a dynamic field now, hit save, and now we gotta go back to our services pages and define the file images that we would like to use for each page. So we'll go into each one in a separate tab here quickly and simply define a different image so that way it's clear to us on the front side that this is working. I'm only gonna update three pages this time because I think you get the idea here. I just want you to see that this is working and that it's dynamic with not just plain text. So if we click on different services pages here, you'll see that with some of them, there is no image loading since I didn't define it. And with some of them, the image does load 
and they're not the same size. You should probably make sure that they are the same size, but you get the idea here. The possibilities of what can be achieved here with just bricks templates and dynamic fields is incredible. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below, and if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do so is to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful day.